A kindred spirit is someone who will tell you how your hair looks when you're making a video. The only mirror I have here in Ruby, my camper van, is the rear view mirror and the sun is shining in right now and I can't really see what I look like. So I'm Lori, I'm in Merritt, BC and in this video I want to share 10 easy and fun ways that I make friends while I'm on the road. The last three ideas for making friends are ideas that I have that I haven't actually tried yet because either I don't have enough courage or I'm not addicted enough yet or I can't remember the third reason well but we'll get to it. Tip number one is something that I mentioned in my video about the hardest things of traveling in a camper van. And in that video, I mentioned that I actually really enjoy going to laundromats because you get to see the locals, you get to kind of see the real town or city that you're in. And the last time I went to a laundromat, I was washing a sari. I was washing this because I got this at a thrift store. I didn't know if I should put it in the dryer or not. I asked the woman working there and because she's from India, she's Indian. And so we struck up a conversation. I really, really like her. And now we've texted a few times. Hi, Dara. Talk to people. Just be yourself and be curious about people. They have stories that probably would astound you. Tip number two. It's to apply for jobs and then go and instead of taking a job, just be friends with the people that you meet. My job is to finish unwrapping that net from around the hay bale. It's not going to be as easy as I thought with a bunch of horses and a couple of dogs. So on Facebook in BC Barn Jobs, I found a posting for someone who they just needed help around the ranch. I emailed them and asked if I could come and visit. I quickly discovered that I am not cut out for barn work. I love Jennifer and Steven. They are kindred spirits. We connect at that soul, spirit, and heart level. So sometimes if something appeals to you and you think, hmm, this appeals to me for some reason, like me, I've been back once since I the fir my first visit. It's just a camera. Yeah. Look at how beautiful you are. I really hope to visit Turning Point and Jennifer and Stephen more often. That place is an amazing place to be. Tip number three. I'm doing therapeutic riding. I'm volunteering a couple days a week. And there's a um, volunteer there, YN. And she's shown me so much about how to tack and untack. And she's a graphic designer. And she's just, we're just, she's so cool. There's just, another woman there who boards her horses, River and Max, retired thoroughbreds. Said that I could go anytime that she's there. Hi, Michaela. I could help her and watch her and learn from her. When I was in Quartzsite, Arizona, I volunteered at the Nomads Helping Nomads uh, Women's RV event. And in my video about fitting in to places where you feel like you don't belong and making yourself at home on the road, I shared some clips of not only what I was doing, but how I met new people and made friends. So volunteering is a great way to meet kindred spirits, people that have the same interests and uh, hobbies and heart that you do. Tip number four go to your library. I went to the library here in Merritt and I attended the newcomers event. I met one woman who was like eight and a half months pregnant. She was a surrogate mom for two gay guys. Going to the library and the events at these libraries are so much fun and they're for the community. Like they're for us to get together and interact. The author talk I went to was Suzanne Samard. She's the author of Finding the Mother Tree and she was fantastic. Tip number five, go to a meetup. So the first Tofino I think maybe the only Tofino meetup that I've gone to was in Death Valley. And I made a video about that. We toured through 14 different camper vans. And I met several people that I'm still in contact with today. You don't feel comfortable asking for a phone number, which I don't like giving out my phone number or my email address. Give them your contact information if you want to keep in contact. Tip number six, make an effort and invite someone out for coffee or ask if you can meet in person. Okay, I have to admit, I don't do this. I rarely initiate contact. I'm one of those meeting and really enjoying and then leaving without necessarily arranging to meet again. But I really learned something important from, from Kelly, the woman I'm going to see here in Merritt. She contacted me and said, hey, I also live near Vancouver. Do you want to meet sometime? 
And I am so grateful that she reached out like that. She had that intuitive hit and she followed it, even though she thought maybe it would make her seem a little crazy or stalkerish. The worst that could have happened is that I could have said, no, you're crazy and stalkerish and I don't want to ever meet you. But the best happened so far in our journey together as friends. So take the initiative and invite people out for a coffee. Tip number seven is my favorite. In Kamloops, I found wild church. And there's the opening and then a prayer and a circle. We go for a walk, a slow meditative walk around the premises separately. The first time I went was the word holy. It was so beautiful and so meaningful to have that time together and then to walk around the park slowly and meditatively, focusing on that word and just listening to God or consciousness or spirit and your own heart. And then after 30, 40 minute, 40 minute walk, which always seems to me like, oh my gosh, what am I, 40 this. minutes goes by so fast. And then after we all come back together as a group and we share, if we want, what sort of God spoke to us or what came to us or what we saw, what we felt, what we knew. Okay. My last three tips are things that I have not done yet, but I would love to do. Number seven is to jam. Oh yeah, because I have my flute, which I talked a little bit about in my update, my camper van update. My favorite way to play the flute is in a band with people, like a community band. The tips that I'm scared to do that I haven't done yet is just jam with people. And when I was saying those words, I didn't even know that there is this sign five minutes away. I'm definitely not at the point of jamming it. Oh, the eighth tip. I hope I'm not at this point someday, but it could happen. Go to an OA, Overeaters Anonymous, or an AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, or an NA, Narcotics Anonymous group in person. And I'm not saying that this is something you should do to make friends. What I'm saying is that if you're alone on the road or even alone at home in your sticks and bricks, and you struggle with addiction. See, I like to have a drink every day. Have a glass of wine or a vodka tonic because I just enjoy it. But sometimes I worry that five days a week is a little bit too much. And what if I'm going to be an alcoholic? And I sometimes see AA meetings in churches and I would love to go because I think it's a very healthy and good way to talk about your um, your addiction, find support and community and make friends. And again, I'm not saying go to AA to make friends. I'm saying that that is something that I've always been curious about and I would never drop in on an AA meeting out of curiosity. If I get to the point where I find that I'm really not comfortable with um, wanting to have a drink at the end of, at happy hour, maybe, I could go to an AA meeting and say, like, um, am I becoming a problem drinker? Would this be helpful? Would it be okay if I sat in or is this inappropriate for me to be here? If you're struggling with stuff like that, join a group. Just try it out. If it doesn't work, then, you know, I tried. It's not for me. Tip number 10, take the initiative when you meet someone that you feel like you connect with. Because you know how sometimes newspapers have those ads? When I saw you on the bus and we really connected or we exchanged a conversation or even our eyes kept meeting. But I never reached out to you and now I regret Instead it. Instead of letting a stranger in the night situation happen, make the invitation first. Don't necessarily ask for someone's phone number or ask for their information but offer yours and then that way you put the ball in their court and you know that you did the best you could to reach a handout in friendship two pitfalls of having friends for me as a writer video creator a horse person a musician and an artist it takes time and energy and we only have a certain amount of time and energy. So either I find that I spend my time with friends or I spend my time doing what I feel like I'm called to do, which is write and make videos and play music and create art. My art and creativity sustains me and my friendships nurture me. It may not be a pitfall for you. You may be the exact opposite of me. You may find your friendships and your family relationships are your purpose for life, for being here. I hope that you find good friends and even better kindred spirits because they help you take good care of yourself because you are worth taking good care of. Mwah. Do you want to see where I am? It's a pretty good view actually. See?
Okay, no, that's not the view. We'll go outside. Okay, let's go see Merritt. I love Merritt. That's the RCMP detachment, that big blue roofed building. And then that's Central Park. That's where I'm going to meet Kelly tomorrow. Hi, Kelly. And that is a skateboard park. And then beyond, across the street, is where I wash Ruby. That's the path I climbed yesterday. Hey, wait. Are we going to see Ruby? There she is. Hey, Ruby. And then on this side, I believe we have a golf course. Nobody's out there yet. Sunday morning around 9 a.m. Too early for golfers? I like how there's no guardrails or fence or even a sign. I love places like this that are or not rural, they're urban, yet still feel rural because there's none of that safety stuff all over the place. Hazard, warning, I'm gonna sue. I mean, we're not liable. And then Logan Lake is that way, and there's a new volunteer horse project I'm doing starting next week. I'll share that soon.